UK is indicating to Serbia that it should focus on joining the EU rather than contesting Kosovo's declaration of independence. The British Foreign Secretary made the comments in Belgrade. Serbia has submitted a resolution to the UN calling Kosovo's secession unacceptable. Mr. William Haig and other Western diplomats are trying to persuade Belgrade to reconsider the resolution before it goes before the UN General Assembly. Let's talk more about this tonight. We're joined uh, by Marko Gasic from the British-Serbian Alliance for Peace. Thanks for uh, joining us from London tonight. Western politicians have said, haven't they, that the map of the Balkans is now complete. It won't be withdrawn. How confident are they then that this will actually be the case at the end of the day and that Serbia will renounce its claims to Kosovo? Uh, I think this is wishful thinking by those Western politicians who are saying this. It's quite an uh, interesting line. What they're saying is that, of course, uh, those who uh, have stolen part of the Ser Serbian territory will be rewarded with a fake state of their own to call uh, Kosovo. And those, for example, uh, in Bosnia who have uh, the Republic of Srpska will never be rewarded with an equivalent. So what they're saying is one law for everybody else in the wars of Yugoslav secession and no law for the Serbians. OK, let's focus in on what Mr Haig had to say. Will his tough talk influence Serbia, do you think, at all? I think it will influence Serbia. I think it will make Serbia realise very clearly that um, for all the talk in the 90s that uh, Slobodan Milosevic was the target of Western policy and that it wasn't directed against Serbs or Serbia, it's quite obvious now that Slobodan Milosevic is long dead, uh, that uh, the pressure still remains and the attempts to carve Serbia and Serbians up still remain. It will create a great deal, of, I think, of animosity and instability long term in the region and it will, I think, remove any illusions left in Serbia that Britain, uh, the so-called ally of two world wars, is anything similar, unfortunately, at the moment. As I mentioned just now, Serbia applied to join the EU last year and to, jo to join it by 2014, if all goes to plan. How important, though, these days, just a year on, is EU membership to Belgrade? And can Western nations, you think, offer any, anything else in exchange, any sweeteners, maybe, for a different stance on Kosovo? There really doesn't seem to be much of a carrot on offer. In fact, there really isn't any. Uh, in realistic terms, Serbia won't be joining the EU for perhaps uh, decades. So it's really not a realistic uh, uh, prospect for Serbia. And in return for an, uh, uh, an illusion, they're being uh, asked to give up 15% of their sovereign territory uh, to the fruits of an illegal aggression by a bombing alliance, which then occupied the territory and proclaimed it uh, as belonging to the terrorists. Uh, who'd been fighting there as well. So uh, Ser Serbia's not being offered anything, really. And indeed, structurally, Serbia's probably not capable of meeting criteria for EU membership for quite a long time anyway. And it's a moot point whether, really, Serbia would benefit from EU membership at all, given uh, its uh, current uh, configuration in terms of business, its uh, whole approach to the economy, and indeed the approach of its government to a uh, viable uh, building of a, of a better business-orientated uh, Serbia. It does seem that the government is more concerned with personal gain in many cases uh, than uh, the gain of the nation and indeed the, the country. And for that reason, I see no, no real pros prospect, or for those reasons, I see no real prospect of Serbia joining the EU in the immediate uh, uh, decades to come. And therefore, I see no re nothing that the EU can offer Serbia indeed, or those parts of the EU which want an independent uh, uh, Kosovo uh, have nothing really to offer Serbia in return. Uh, I hope that Mr. Tadic won't make the fatal mistake of believing false promises by so-called allies. Well, he used the term wishful thinking at the top of this interview, sir. What would the consequences be if Serbia does continue to refuse to bend to international pressure? Well, it's only pressure from one uh, smaller part of the international community. The real world community is out there and is not saying very much at the moment. I think that the consequences, if Serbia refuses to bend to the will of those who bombed it and attacked it and are now trying to carve away its territory, would be that the world community, the real world community, the real international community, would at last have a chance to perhaps decide for themselves whether they agree with the NATO position that unilateral secession, uh, as in the case of Kosovo's Albanians, is allowed and just. I think the world community might take another view, and if Serbia stays strong and sticks to its uh, uh, principled position, then the world community may well very shortly get a chance to express its opinion, perhaps for the first time. Marco Gasic from the British Serbian Alliance for Peace on the line from London tonight. Thanks for your views on the programme here on RT.